Oh no. What have I done? This is a video that happens when you make a video talking about every single time Telesto broke Destiny. And you have this big brain idea to talk about every single raid cheese without thinking that there are 13 raids with 67 encounters to go over. Anyways, welcome to Raid Cheese, the ultimate video of breaking the game of destiny. You may ask what a cheese is. Well, you know cheese. Wait, cheese? Do they know you? Hey guys, I'm Cheese, and you can find me on my channel, Cheese Forever. Destiny players started using the term cheese to describe a variety of ways to gain advantage in the game. A raid cheese is anything that results in a direct payoff from completing raid encounters in a way that's not intended by the developers. Bungie expects a certain flow for each encounter, and sometimes we manage to break that cycle in unimaginable ways. Cheese, according to my research, seems to change game to game. The term was mostly used in fighting games as a means to achieve easier payoff in fights, but cheese in other games can be a more complicated way too. In platformers, cheese is usually the payoff being faster, but the input can be a harder trick. But we're not here to talk about fighting games. We're here to talk about Destiny. Some Destiny cheeses require these five head ways of thinking that only a gaming monk would be able to teach after a lifelong journey with Rocky music playing in the background in a montage. You know the ba 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 DMC. Other Destiny cheeses are just, oh hey buddy, why don't you just stand there and shoot this thing? Since there are well over a hundred different cheeses, I have broken the video up into timestamps. I also probably missed a few along the way, so be sure to comment which cheeses we missed and comment which cheese is your favorite of all time. I want to say a big thank you to Cheese Forever, Shinrei, and Vertical for all their help in gathering the cheeses for the video. And since this is a massive video that took a long time to make, I grabbed a sponsor so the YouTube algorithm couldn't smash us into the ground. All right, good, cool, thanks, enjoy the video. GMG Performance is sponsoring this video, and I know what you guys are going to say, oh, hashtag ad. Listen, I really cannot stress these glasses enough. They've helped me a ton, especially with this video. I stream, I write, I edit, I do everything in front of a screen, whether it be my computer or my phone. I am in front of a screen all the time, and with that comes damage to my eyes. All that blue light being shot from our monitors isn't really healthy for us, and it causes eye strain and tiredness all the time. You don't really have a choice to avoid blue light. GMG glasses are not only a good fight against everything blue light, but they also look cool and they're really, really helpful. They don't even have that yellow tint that you guys are probably used to. Here, have a... See? There's like... Nothing. I mean, it's blurry, but there's, there's nothing. Now, it is Black Friday, and GMG is doing a crazy sale. All the glasses are 50% off on GMG's website right now. 50% isn't just a little insane. It's massive. So if you guys want to check them out, there is literally no better time. Click the link in the description, grab a pair of GMG glasses. Thank you to GMG for sponsoring this video, and on to the cheese. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. The subscriber that changed all of YouTube forever. That could be you, but you chose not to subscribe and not to hit the bell. Wow. Just wow. Anyway, 
for the rest of the Chads and the Chadettes who sub with the bell on, enjoy the video. Well, if it ain't the Vault of Glass, everyone's most nostalgic raid, and the raid I'm about to bust out the big wheel of Parmesan for. I want to lay out the parameters for this video before we jump into the vault. There are a lot of cheeses, so finding an exact person who found it, when they were patched, and how late they were discovered can be incredibly tricky. So the order we're going for may seem out of the ordinary, but we're just going in order of encounters, not dates and times. And I will do my best to tell you if these have been patched or not. No promises for all of them, but I hope you understand. The very first cheese on our list, in the original Vault of Glass, is the easy way to raise the Spire cheese. A player can simply ride their Sparrow to the Campus 9 load zone and allow the Spire to form all the way on its own by just waiting a couple of minutes. In Destiny 1, the plates were naturally up on their own, so by not spawning enemies and just leaving, the game kept the progress up. This can't be done in Destiny 2 since there is no load zone to a new area. But yeah, this would have saved a lot of time in Vanilla Destiny if we knew about this one. Number two is a classic, sitting on top of the rocks at the back of the Oracle's encounter with the Icebreaker exotic sniper rifle in hand and popping the Oracles. Icebreaker was an exotic sniper rifle that could regenerate special ammo from nothing, and seeing as the Oracles had no order to them back then, why worry about having to shoot an enemy? Just jump up into the cheese spot, man! Bonus points if you knew about the rocks outside of the map and the spot close to the boss to shoot the back two oracles. Bungie made all these spots turn back zones later into Destiny, but never forget the classics. Next up, we have the Templar, aka the encounter that there's not really a point for cheese in Destiny 2 these days, just shoot the boss. But in Vanilla Destiny, we didn't have the Well of Radiance. We had this rock, and we used to ride these babies for miles. The Templar worked a bit differently in Destiny 1, allowing your team to cleanse with the Relic and being able to break your own Detain Shield too. This method of sitting way outside of the map was a cheese because you never had to worry about being shot by the boss or the enemies and never having to worry about the mechanics. Just slowly tickle the Templar until it died. This spot was later turned into a turnback zone, but this was where my first Templar kill was, so I'm giving it bonus points. Number four. Another Templar cheese was the patented push the boss off the back. Oh god, it's so stupid. Another Templar cheese was the patented push the boss off the map method. This method required any area of effect grenade to be thrown at the boss, and the boss would slowly back up, eventually falling off the map. Warlocks with solar nades were the best for this since nades just kept coming back, and the boss just slowly mufasted itself off the ledge, even on hard mode. This, just like the one we'll get to, was patched by putting blockers on the ledges so they couldn't fall off, and by making the boss not react to those grenades. Number five, Gorgons? What, what Gorgons? Just skip past all of them. Using the taunt glitch to breach through the walls, a player could just skip a whole encounter in the Vault of Glass. I'll let the video speak for itself, but the Gorgons really stood no chance against the real raid boss, Eververse. Alright, now that the Gorgons are di- No, come on. We can't keep getting away with this! Okay, so using more Eververse emotes, we can see this Titan not only skipping the Gorgons, but also skipping the jumping puzzle. This is a cheese named the Cav Slide that is much harder to do than just simply jumping past the Gorgons, but using Power Sliding with his Super in the Felwinter's Artifact, the Exotic Twilight Garrison, and the Emote, a player can do two encounters in less than 50 seconds. It's a hard cheese, but a cheese worth the payoff to learn. Alright, moving past the Gorgons fun-
You're kidding me. All right, this one is called the Bellicose Boop. Named after the Empyrean Bellicose in Destiny 1, which allows the player to slow down in midair while aiming down sights. Jumping off this rock at just the right trajectory and calculated by the many scientists at Destiny 1 HQ, flings the player around like a bag of mozzarella. And aiming down sights with the helmet on slows the player down enough to land just past the Gorgon's encounter. Number eight, God damn it, cheese, get in the damn truck. We're going to Atheon. Nope, not the gatekeeper, Atheon, where everyone who probably clicked this video came here for anyways. Ah, yes, Atheon cheese. Just simply throw an AOE grenade like you did at the Templar and Atheon would fall straight off of the map. No raid mechanics needed, no teleporting, just pure loot and a lot of LFG looking for cheese. Variations of said cheese were discovered too. You had the classic ones, then you had the cheese by pushing him off of the middle. Hell, you even had one I'd consider a whole separate cheese with number nine, guaranteeing who got teleported by simply sitting at the back of the room. Bungie has turned these cheeses into an emote, but back then, this was patched and the whole arena was like having blockers in bowling. Number 10. Later down the line, Atheon didn't even have time to make it more than a few feet, as throwing grenades and shooting Gallahorns as fast as possible at the guy just nuked him in 10 seconds. This one I do hesitate calling a cheese since it's just very effective damage, but I mean you are skipping literally the whole fight for that direct payoff so it has to count. No arguing in the comments. So long, Vault of Glass and Destiny 1. You were a nice and creamy cheese. Welcome in to Crota's End, the son of Oryx, cousin of Savathun, and rightful heir to having every single encounter completely broken by cheese. Crota was always laughed at for being the most broken raid in Destiny, and as we said in the Crota raid video, this raid was swamped by development hell, even being a part of the King's Fall raid in its original design. Will Crota be the most busted of all the raids, or will we be able to find less than Vault of Glasses 10? Let's find out, and I guess break the raid? Before we even get to the classics, we gotta talk about the weight manipulation cheese. By having a player leave to orbit, the weight of darkness modifier takes its sweet time to start, allowing the player to zoom past the lamps. Number 12. Now, starting off with a more known cheese, is the Crota's End classic in Vanilla Destiny, the lamp launch. If a player were to sit next to these exploding lamps at the back of the rocks and wait for the lamps, something fun happened. When the lamps eventually exploded, it would send the player flying halfway through the entire lamp encounter. Variations of the trajectory could even be done to send a player all the way to the final area. But we're talking about the classics here, and this one was eventually patched. Number 13. We have another variation of the lamp jump, but one even easier in my opinion. No need for lamps to boop the player, just jump. Using the momentum and losing your weight of darkness allowed for a player to just simply glide all the way up to the next ledge. Pretty damn easy in my opinion, and a lot better than waiting on a boop. But let's be real, the other one was kind of just more fun. All three classes could even do this one, so we'll just make it a part of the same cheese. Something I won't do for upcoming cheeses on the list. Not sure if this one ever got patched. Uh, someone let me know in the comments. Number 14. Why even worry about the lamps at all, or even a jump, when swords came out? By using a sword and skating with it by animation canceling, a player can just skip straight to the final plate with no problems. Not only is this a time saver, you literally skip the entire, well, everything in this encounter. This one is not patched. 
Number 15. Did you know there's even a cheese plate too? Oh yeah, Crota was not messing around with his catering. If a player wants to, they can get enough momentum and just sit on a rock. There are two rocks that count here, but the one I'll use for this video is the closest to the bridge, since it's still being used. Either way, for one encounter, four cheeses is pretty good. Number 16. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to prepare you for how busted this encounter is about to be. So let's just start with despawning every single enemy in the room. All three classes could do this one, and I don't know how this even made it into the game. I'm dropping my line, was this even playtested? But since we already mentioned the development hell this raid went through, I don't think much time could go into testing. By having players jump onto this rock on the right, then this rock, careful to not fall off the map, then this rock, then this ledge, then all the way up top to the tower and jumping in the air, every single enemy in the room would despawn. I remember this cheese well and every single one for this room since nobody did the mechanics for this room. Everyone and their mothers, even Grandma F 1997, did this cheese. This one was patched. Number 17. Remember that pesky super called self res? No, you probably don't if you never played Destiny 1, and there's a reason for that. Warlocks with this super ability could resurrect from the dead and completely bypass raid mechanics like that small one you may have heard of. Oh yeah, death. Using the sword relic, a player with self res could fly across the bridge without building it if they jump from a certain trajectory, then killing the gatekeeper dying and self resing on the other side. Doing this over and over again netted the player a solo clear of this encounter and an easy run to the next one. This one still works, but we're just getting started. Number 18. Why even use a sword relic when you have regular swords to begin with? Just fly over the bridge, sword in hand. Still works. Number 19. Hell, while you're over here, why don't we just have someone sit next to this rock and have nothing be able to hit you? Sounds like a plan to me. Does not work anymore. Number 20. Hunter Blink Bridge Cheese. Now, this one is pretty much the same as the other bridge ones, except it's a hunter, and this hunter can blink jump across with the blade dancer swiping. This one does still work. Number 21. We've shown different ways to get over the bridge. Now let's show the speedrun cheese, which is a bit more complex, and there is an invisible hitbox under your feet, making you need to touch the bridge for a split second and hover just above that hitbox. This one is a much harder cheese, but a cheese nonetheless. Number 22. Oh boy, we're still on this encounter for Crota. This time, even faster of a bridge cheese, we have the Titan Slide. Going across is relatively the same to the other cheeses you've seen, but getting back is where this one comes into play. Again, power sliding with the Felwinter's Relic to take away Super, and popping the Death from Above Super before the artifact takes away that Super Meter. A player slams into the ground and takes that momentum flying back across the bridge being sure to sword block and slow themselves down just a bit. This one still works. Number 23. Okay, so you thought that one was wild to get across the bridge and back. Well, meet the Superman cheese. This cheese allows the player to fling across the bridge if they're inside of the Annihilator totem when it's wide open. When the totem closes, the player flings all the way into Cheesetopia across the other side of the bridge. I just learned this one with you guys, and I'm just as shocked looking at this cheese. What the hell? Number 24. All right, last one at the bridge for now. We have the sword block cheese. You ever just want to skip the entire raid encounter? Well, just make sure you bring a sword and block across the bridge. This one still works. That is the final one just for this encounter, and I can't stress it enough 
how little the entire Destiny community knows what's going on with this encounter. I'm convinced you were supposed to cheese this one because nobody did it the way that Bungie wanted us to. Now we need to move on to the next encounter once I get all this cheese off of my shoe. Number 25. We're now out of Crota's Bridge and onto the hallway where the Chest and Death Singer are. This hallway, which normally has two Shriekers to kill and open up a wall and a race to get to the chest, can not only be done the traditional way, but eh, screw it. Why do we even need to be here? Let's just breach through the wall and start the next encounter with cheese number 26, shooting this Shrieker before it even opens up. Yeah, just Gallahorn this immune bad boy and it pops open like a balloon. These are important because just like the hallway we skipped, these allow the doors to break open to kill the Death Singer. So by shooting it like this, not only do you skip having to kill any enemies, but you also speed this encounter up tenfold. Number 27. Another way to speed this encounter up tenfold? Just skip every single mechanic and go straight to the boss from above her and shoot down. Taking this path along the rocks at the back and up top of her ute allowed the players to just shoot her in the head. I don't even know what to say. This is goofy. This whole entire raid is goofy. Do you guys want this one back? I don't know. Anyway, it's patched. Number 28. Crota, they're waking him. Oh yeah, baby. We're now on to some good stuff. Let's get the two funny ones out of the way. First up for the big man is removing the presence of Crota. To do this, all the players must die. Then have a warlock self-res. That's it. Number 29. Now for the most infamous cheese in this entire raid. Keeping Crota down on one knee. By having a player knock Crota down just by shooting his shield, and while Crota was down on one knee, the host of the game just had to either unplug their ethernet or eject the disc from their console. The host disconnect would keep Crota down on one knee the whole time, even when the host joined back. Crota had the full mozzarella, and players just abused this one until it was eventually patched out. Number 30, bonus cheese here. More like a yogurt, but I'm still counting it. We have the Crota fall off a ledge cheese. If the big green ran towards the player when the player jumped off the ledge, there was a chance to just have Crota fall off too. Even chasing people down into spawn rooms. Damn Crota, I'm sorry. I won't pull the ethernet cord anymore, man. This one actually still works sometimes. With Crota now out of the way though, that is 20 cheeses for the big man, beating out Vault of Glass by a whole 10. With two raids out of the way, you can see why this video is massive. We're only on our third raid and there's a lot more cheese to cover. Now, on to King's Cheese. Welcome to the raid that a lot of you seem to like. King's Fall, for those who haven't seen my video, is the raid that I believe changed the game. I know it's a meme on my channel to say that, but it's also true. This raid was built like a traditional MMO and strayed far away from the Destiny standard at the time. Having players fight in a linear setting pitted up against encounter after encounter in a straight shot to Oryx. This is the first raid to have different phases in each encounter, starting with Hive, ending with Taken. It's also the only raid we knew who the final boss would be at this point too, which added into that excitement. Hopefully Sabathun does the same, but who knows. Was that excitement met? Yeah. Was there cheese? Also yes. The first cheese was in the entrance and was coined the part glitch. When a player with Solar Hammer Super lets their Super Meter tick down low, then throws the final hammer while finishing picking up a part, this tricks the game into thinking the player is both holding the part and not holding the part, allowing the player to break open the doors for themselves and run with the part, only messing up the player's reticle. Number 32. 
skipping the ship jumping puzzle entirely. Yes, if a player is wearing Twilight Garrison and has a sword, they can animation cancel and boop their way to the other side. Number 33. Ah, screw doing it the slow way. Mom said it was my turn on the Xbox. Yeah, so power sliding is cool, and so is the Imperian Bellicose helmet. Number 34. Totems, everyone's favorite plate encounter, this time with a craft single on the plate. Just have someone sword block to the plate and keep going back and forth into the poison area. I don't know why I'm yelling. Until you stop taking damage, period. This player can stand on the plate sword blocking while the aura is passed between only a couple of players, making this encounter zoom by really quickly. Number 35. So now the War Priest, which had nothing, and the Hallway to Golgoroth, which had nothing, and Golgoroth, which has one cheese. This cheese has to do with the Gaze Holder. There's a hole where nothing can hit you, and that's it. I know the rest of the cheeses still work in the raid. I'm not sure about this one though. Number 36. We have the <laughs> walls. And we can have like the Pornhub music, the do, 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 which I wouldn't know, of course, but you know. The walls have one cheese to them, and that is the skip to the chest boop. Using an off angle on this uh, phallic shaped object, and with the sword out, the momentum launches the player into the room with the chest. This one is always fun, like a nacho cheese. Number 37. The only Oryx cheese is one that is from Mortal Kombat. Don't believe me? Oryx, get over here! Tether this man down from the ceiling when he flies up in the air. Black Hole Perk will pull him all the way down. With all of that out of the way, King's Fall didn't really have that many cheeses. There was originally one for the sisters encounter, but we couldn't ever find the footage. So I'm not counting it. It's not really hard to see why this monstrous raid had very little cheese. A massive amount of care was put into it, and it was the centerpiece of Bungie's biggest expansion in all of Destiny 1. Only 7 cheeses to Vogue's 10 and Crota's 19, with more spaces in King's Fall than any raid before. But we still have one more raid for Destiny 1. So, who will be the real king of the cheese? If Vault the Glass saved Destiny from falling into mediocrity, Crota was development hell, and King's Fall changed the landscape of Destiny raids, what did Wrath of the Machine do for Destiny then? Well, in my elitist Destiny Chadwick opinion, I think that this raid perfected Destiny raids. Destiny raids went from sitting still in rooms, doing the very basics, to only having one person to really do a raid, to very MMO-like mechanics for Destiny, into a fast-paced whole team raid where someone could stand out and make big plays, but they weren't forced to. The raid just flowed well. Cheese also flows well when melted, so will this cheese be perfected, or will there just be a craft single or two? Let's find out. Number 38. The first two encounters have no cheese to our knowledge. Kind of disappointing in that department. Come on, Bungie, make your raids have flaws. We have cheese to count. It wouldn't be all the way until the siege engine that our first cheese for this raid is found. The part glitch. You know, that one we mentioned for King's Fall. That glitch was actually found here first in the timeline. Using the same glitch with Sunbreaker Titans and timing the pickup of the Siege Engine part allows the player to zoom with the parts that would normally slow you down in hand, completely bypassing all of the struggle this encounter can provide. This one still works. Number 39. Axis Phase 1. Not 2. No, the one with those damn turrets on hard mode. Phase 1 has one cheese, and it's a pretty simple one breaking two cores with one bomb. If the bomb is thrown in this specific spot, two cores will break with it instead of one. Not the most complicated cheese in the game, but a cheese nonetheless. Number 40, Cannonless Glitch. 
This one is a fucking wild ride. Cannonless glitch requires the player to constantly drop and pick up the cannons at Axis to eventually make the game just give up and allow the player to lose their lockout buff. For those that don't know, the lockout timer doesn't allow you to normally pick up a ball after just having picked up one. This is how you get around it. It even zooms your screen in just to reinforce the queso. Number 41. Our last cheese for the Wrath of the Machine raid is another permanent damage phase bug. That's right, you could push Atheon off, keep Crote on one knee, pull Oryx to the ground, and now you can permanently damage Axis. Wasn't Destiny 1 just wonderful? At the moment when Axis is about to teleport after the last bomb hits for damage and a Scorch Cannon is attached to him, the host, say it with me, Yanks the ethernet cord out. That's right, Crota, you weren't alone. This video was nice enough to explain the reason this cheese even happens. So have a listen. Now inside of the game code, the game cannot fully register when Axis is supposed to teleport, when damage phase is starting on Axis, when the fire team is also switching a party leader, and also when the game just can't deal with that much lag. Now, when all of these actually interrupt the game's code, what the game registers is that Axis is supposed to sit on a center terminal and just sit there. The beauty of this one is that while Crota was on one knee praying to the worm gods, Axis is out here taking a nap. Wake up, Axis! Dinner's ready! All right, guys, those are all of the Destiny 1 raid cheeses. And this is the point in the video I debated splitting it up into two separate videos. But you see the timeline of this video, and yeah, I guess I made a decision. Good or bad? Well, who knows? If you have made it this far, just know you're a Chad or a Chadette, and that there were only four cheeses in Wrath, making it our lowest by far in Destiny 1. How would Destiny 2's first ever raid go? Well, let's just... Let's jump, jump the game! Welcome to Destiny 2, a game that is absolutely busted. Not in the traditional sense that we're used to, but in a totally different way. Whether it be debuffs, buffs, damage glitches, weird swapping, storage, emotes, everything you can think of that could go wrong has gone wrong, and especially on Destiny's grandest stage of all, the raids. Our definition of cheeses has sort of a weird twist for Destiny 2. Anything that bypasses raid mechanics is typically what we would count as a cheese. But what if that raid mechanic was also damage? Could we bypass that? There are inconsistencies with Destiny 2 as well, where some of these cheeses will work for some bosses, and then for some reason they just won't work on another one, because the boss is programmed a certain way. There are some things that should apply to multiple raids, but for whatever reason, they don't. So you might sit there and question, hey, why does this work for here and not work for there? I don't know, man. It was the most frustrating process I've ever had to work on. But anyways, everybody, I hope you enjoy. I hope you understand. And welcome to Destiny 2, the most broken of all of the raids. Welcome to Destiny 2's first raid, and one that is not currently in the game. Yeah, this one was a part of the Sunset Era, just like a lot of them on the Destiny 2 list. So attempting any of these cheeses here would uh, require a time machine. Leviathan was a raid that was doomed to fail. The reason it was doomed to fail was the systems that Destiny 2 Year 1 set out for. Double primary weapons, sluggish movement, dry abilities, and no random rolls meant that this raid was built around a game that was doomed to fail. Players hated this raid since it ended on a cliffhanger, but as far as I know, speedrunners love this raid. Even having a week just for speeds where the rotation of the encounters lined up for the fastest time, also known as Levy Week. Oh yeah, that's right. This raid also tried to be Dark Souls 1 level design, allowing you to freely explore and connect to each encounter. 
but you didn't get to choose. That was on a rotation. Enough talk about it though. That's what the video I already made is about. We're here to break this already broken and now dead raid. Starting with cheeses number 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, and 47, which are all oobs to get into different parts of the Leviathan. And since we do skip the Castellum and the intended ways to get through the underbelly, I will count all of these for Leviathan as they take you to different portions of this giant fish. Number 48, grabbing the chest in the underbelly by the balls of cheese, of course. The armory chest normally has the players shooting the defense turrets faster than the doors can lock them to get a chest if they have the associated key. But with this cheese, a player can just jump and grab the chest through the floor. Number 49, the Jotun cheese on the doggos. All right, since I was a part of this one, let me explain. Jotun had a bug at the time that tied to frame rate and allowed you to do a ton of extra damage if you barrel stuff the damn thing into an enemy. You'll find a lot of bugs in Destiny 2 that are tied to frame rate, something that still happens in the game. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One users are still punching air to this day. Number 50. Oh my god, guys, we made it 50 deep. Don't pat yourself on the back yet. We still have a lot more to go. How about we despawn the room? Yeah, with this one, I'm gonna let the intro of this video play itself. Hey guys, it's Draw, we back in Destiny 2, and today we're gonna be doing the dog's cheese, the Pleasure Garden's cheese. This guy right here, my friend How we found out how to do this, is a big shout out to him. What do you know? We have another network glitch where someone leaves the game and it messes up the encounter in some way. For the dogs, it went from eight dogs down to only three to kill. I will never understand the coding, and especially not in Destiny. This game feels like it's one long linguini ready to snap at any moment. Number 51. You know those arrows in the gauntlet encounter? Oh, you don't? Well, who cares? Just shoot them all really fast and you will never have to worry about learning how they work. Number 52. Ah, yes. Another example of a harder cheese than the regular way. But faster if everyone gets it. The run back cheese. So normally at the end of the gauntlet encounter, all six players had to run forward, swapping off, grabbing orbs, and then dunking at the end. But with this cheese, four players take only a small step back while other players run forward and another player runs back. The encounter spawns orbs at the next hole every time someone runs through a set of orbs. So by zooming back and forth, the four orbs needed to dunk and win are already right in front of the four players who just took a step back. Long-winded, overcomplicated, but this is an AIDS cheese and one for a more refined raid, eh? Number 53, 54, and 55 are all more despawn enemy glitches per encounter. So the same method applied to the doggos that they do in all of this footage. Number 56. Symmetry was a gun that worked relatively the same as uh, Telesto. Oh yeah, that bad boy. Symmetry has two modes, regular scout rifle mode and terrorize your friends mode. The latter mode has projectiles that act as their own entities, which does some funny things like skip the teleport mechanic in Callus because the Scion dying thinks you are teleporting the Symmetry bullets. Uh, yeah, spaghetti code. Number 57. The Coil Glitch. A controversial one at that. I, uh, never understood why. But I'll let you watch Sweatsicle's video on that one. The Coil Glitch required looking for a heavy brick on the ground, picking it up with a ward cliff, then swapping to another heavy weapon. This would give the player full heavy ammo in any other heavy. The reason for this was because each of the eight Wardcliffe coils in the rocket counted as a heavy ammo shot. So in Wardcliffe, the player had one rocket, but in every other heavy, the player had full ammo. This one was used to win the world's first prestige Leviathan, and oh boy, before this ends up on Reddit, I'm moving on to the next one. Number 58. Another Wardcliffe coil glitch, this time infinite. 
Yeah, baby. Just crouch and shoot Wardcliffe coils over a rally barricade for infinite ammo. This cheese was very, very tasty. Number 59. More skulls and callus? Yep, just die and more skulls spawn in callus's mouth. That makes perfect sense, right? I think this was made in an effort to have that hero moment. You know, some people die, more skulls are made to compensate and hit the same amount of damage. Either way, die and callus pukes even more. Number 60. All right, Wither Horde insta-killing bosses. I have no clue why this worked. It just insta-killed bosses. Callus was the first one up. Yep, bye-bye, Callus. Number 61. Soloing the entire void room by yourself. For this one, you're just going to do the encounter normally, but plant those stompers into the corner of this rock, turn around, and shoot all the bubble scions. Number 62. Escaping the void room by whooshing with a sword. You know the big suck that Callus does? Just swipe with a sword and avoid all of the suck. Wow, with that out of the way, those are all of the Leviathan cheeses that we have on the list. Well, with the raid named Leviathan, you know that there's going to be more raids to cover, and that means more cheese to cover. In this raid, we had 21 cheeses, which is more than any raid in Destiny 1, and it's not hard to see why. This raid was built for a different type of game, and most of the cheeses came well after the raid's prime. But that doesn't stop this raid from being one that I would call doomed to fail. The next two raids aren't technically raids, they're raid layers, and oh god, I can already see the comment. Well, Evan, actually, this is not a raid! Take to the comments, we'll farm this video for Reddit gold. I don't care. Anyways, let's talk about one of two raid layers in Destiny 2, Eater of Worlds. Oh, Eater of Worlds, the raid that was won on the world's first stage by an LFG team, and one that I still can't call a good raid in almost any aspect outside of the final two encounters. It felt like the Crota treatment on a much worse level, utilizing the same assets and similar location without any of its own character. I guess it just felt more like chores than a true fulfilling experience. This doesn't take away any sort of accomplishment. I just feel like this raid is a rough one at best and it did get the sunset treatment too. Look, this one had the same problems that Leviathan had and our next raid would have, but that's because of the year one systems. But we're not here for that. We're here for a nice dip of queso. So let's start with number 63, Telesto Catalyst Chest on all three characters solo. Did you know you used to be able to get this chest on all three characters? The reason why I'm putting this as one number and not three separate numbers is because the route is basically identical and requires nothing else to pull off. A player just had to oob through the opening to get to the plates, jump their way to the James Bond gun and shoot out flying through the rings, getting the chest in, hopefully the catalyst. It was really that easy. I would compare this to soloing the chest in Crota's first encounter, but that one isn't a cheese since it's just running to a door. This one requires skipping whole encounters and oobing to a chest. Number 64 and 65. We're jumping past the others and on to the actual raid content. Argos and Argos' first encounter, since this cheese applies to both. Striking Hand is a mod that allows players to do 20% extra damage after killing something in the Leviathan with a melee for close to 10 seconds. Using Striking Hand on an enemy and beaming down the crystals at Argos and the shield in the final encounter would speed up the process greatly, allowing the player to do two beams at once. Number 66, Cannonless Argos. This giant Hydra with a tongue, for some reason, also had cannons. Just angle Argos to a side and break them off since they pop through the shield. It was really that easy and it saved a lot of the lethality from this boss too. You can even do cheese number 67, where it's similar but it's before you even start Argos. Using anti-barrier guns and popping these bad boys off. It's okay Argos, ice cream will make it feel all better. Number 68, Wither Horde one taps. Do I need to say anything else? Just doesn't make any sense still. Number nice. 
Alright guys, we can cut the video now. We hit the funny number. We did it, everyone. For this one, we'll make it slow and methodical. Anti-barrier. Just shoot the boss with anti-barrier weapons. Take the boss down without doing any mechanics. Really boring and slow, but it gets the job done. Number 70. Jotun glitch. This time on Argos. I made a video on this one, and people did not like it at all. Number 71, Worm God Caress Throwing Hammers Glitch. Okay, let me start by saying this with some wizard stuff. Telesto the ground, shoot the Telesto pelts with Worm God on to build stacks. Swap to Syntheseps and get Roaring Flames times three. Swap back to Worm God Caress to build even more invisible stacks. One, two, punch the boss with a shotgun, but throw throwing hammers instead of punching. Have someone behind the other five feeding hammers and applying a debuff like Tractor Cannon. This resulted in the at the time world record boss kills. That was before Wither Horde, but this one was a really complex and really weird cheese. Like that Cheese It commercial where it's like matured. Please God sponsor me Cheese It's like please God. So those are all the cheeses that we found for Eater of Worlds. But just like the Leviathan, I'm sure if this raid was still around, we'd find like 30 more. Just imagine stasis on Argos. Do I really need to say any more? Eater of Worlds had nine cheeses, a lot less than the big pot Leviathan. But there is one more raid from that year in the Leviathan to cover. So let's get out of Eater of Worlds and go to the top of the Leviathan. Spire of Stars. Fire of Stars, my personal favorite of the year one raids for Destiny 2, and probably the hardest raid boss Destiny has ever made past the day one experience. Spire is buggy, Spire is hard, Spire has really only two great encounters, but I don't know, I always loved Valkaor and the whole raid, it always felt great taking him down. Anyways, cheese. Number 72. The first cheese is in the very first encounter. So normally greed will build up from holding the ball for too long once you've grabbed the mist. But if you time your super just right above the ball, then all of the stacks will reset and your super doesn't get used. The ball will get picked up and you can progress normally. This one is definitely wonky. Number 73, ball duping, the very first encounter. If a player throws the ball close to another player and the middle pillar, it not only gives the player an unbuffed ball, but also activates the pillar without greed being applied? I have no clue. This, this game. Number 74. There is also another ball dupe strat used in later speedruns, where one player stands at the top of a specific distance from the center after the shield is down. When the ball is thrown to this player, it hits the center, but also duplicates in the person's hand. It's very similar to the one above, but just slightly different. Number 75, the luxurious toast emote farm. You know that emote. This one has some weird specifications to get into. So hear me out. If a player had a hunter and completed only the first encounter a previous week, they could do that encounter the week after. Not for legendary engrams, but for bright engrams. So, Eververse is getting robbed tonight, lads. Number 76, F it, infinite revives, why not? The host can't do this, but everyone else can. Just join on the host when they start the Spire of Stars raid and go back and forth from the inventory screen and the character screen, no, I'm not joking. This keeps you in orbit for longer, and the host should join in before everyone else if it worked. Then the host does the encounter while everyone else isn't there. This tricks the game into giving you infinite revives. An easy encounter made even easier. LFG is gonna go wild over this. Number 77. We're talking about the jumping puzzle now. And yeah, this one was like a nice hard block of cheese in some ways since it required good inputs for warlocks, but Hey, when Worldline was around, you could just zoom past this entire encounter. Number 78. Titans, on the other hand, had a slight variation in how they did it, so I counted this one as separate. Titans just slapped on those precious lion rampants and sword flew across literally no problem. Number 79. Now the final encounter, Valka Orr, 
had some new and some older cheeses. So let's start with some more super resetting for the greed stacks. Number 80. Ah, yes. Who doesn't love some Halloween and candy? Well, you wanted candy, it was yours in 10 seconds. It was simple. Just change characters when the mission complete screen came up in Spire of Stars, then join back on that same friend who hosted the raid before. Doing this kept you in a cycle of getting rewards from the raid without doing anything except having a good SSD. PS4 and Xbox load times would go on to punch air even to this day. Fun fact with this one, it actually counted as raid completions on the site raid report. So if your friends had a bunch of Spire of Star clears, you know why. I will say this one isn't a cheese for an encounter, but it completely bypasses how you're supposed to get rewards. Let me know in the comments if you guys think I should account for this or not. Number 81. Again, Witherhorde one taps the boss. Scientists still punching air to this day. Number 82. Jotun, higher frames. Yep, that's it. Number 83. From the makers of the Jotun damage glitch and insta-kill Witherward damage glitch, we have the ball dupe damage glitch. By having one player stand on top of the callous robot when the team is supposed to throw the balls at its hand and instead catching the balls the team throws, throwing them back and using said balls for damage instead, the team would insta-kill Valkaor. This one was a harder cheese than easier, but definitely still fun to watch. Number 84, Prestige Spire Cheese. Now, there was a modifier back when Destiny experimented with Prestige Raids, where meleeing gave you weapon damage and killing with said weapon meant you had a stronger melee damage, but at the cost of said weapon damage. So basically, punch a pot and swap between the two of them. Yep, pot. Not sure why this worked. I'm gonna guess that the pots counted as enemies for some reason, but these pots were always weird in Leviathan. Number 85, another prestige mod, another prestige cheese. This one, just like the last one, applied to all prestige raid layers. This time, just bypass the limited ammo arsenal mod, which had the players swapping weapons on very limited ammo. For this cheese, you would just, well, I guess you would use what kind of Bungie, Bungie kind of cheese their own mechanic by putting in r rally flags. You know what? I'm counting it. All right, guys, that is Spire of Stars cheese. And that is all of the year one cheeses of Destiny 2. And you're already seeing the differences in the two games. While Destiny 1 had these pretty refined, cool, yet simplistic cheeses, Destiny 2 has these damage glitches all over the place with different buffs, mechanics, debuffs. It can be a bit tricky trying to define a cheese for Destiny 2, whereas Destiny 1 had a very, very clear-cut recipe. Now we're about to embark on Year 2 of Destiny 2 where Bungie went back to the destiny a lot of us fell in love with. Before we do that though, we should keep a count update in case you got lost, or more specifically, I got lost. Spire of Stars had 14 cheeses that we counted. That puts it ahead of Eater's 9 cheeses and, well, lower than Leviathan's 21 cheeses. Now let's see what Bungie's biggest raid in all of Destiny 2 had to offer. Will it be flawless, or will it be the most busted raid to date? Welcome to Last Wish, the raid that you may have thought had a cheese here and there, but is actually full of cheese, and it keeps growing over time, slowly molding and rotting away. Last Wish was my favorite raid of all time for Destiny, and while that still remains to be mostly true, I think I love Last Wish for its prime. Now it's just outdated and could use some major updates to its loot and difficulty. But more than anything, it could use some major updates to these cheeses, with easily the most offensive cheese of all time existing here. Before we count our cheeses, I want to leave a note here. Yes, all of Year 1 raids and some of the raids we're going to count in the future have been Sunset, but for Last Wish and the ones that aren't Sunset, a note needs to be made about patches. We tried our best to determine if things were patched or not patched. But if one slips through the cracks and is patched or isn't patched, I take full responsibility for that. 
Bungie hasn't been effective about patching old raids, but this year with Beyond Light, they have been. So things could be patched that we say aren't patched and vice versa. All right, here we go. Number 86. The first cheese in the Last Wish raid was actually a cheese before the raid came out, glitching to the bridge chest early. If a player were to follow this odd path out of bounds and over a bunch of rocks, they could grab the raid chest early for weapons and armor from the raid. This one was patched, but the follow-up cheese much later down the road and number 87 allowed players who didn't even own Forsaken to join on players that did own Forsaken and get the chest too. Number 88, Kali the Corrupted, the first boss of the raid and the boss of the cheese that most definitely still works. Kali is supposed to have players cleanse plates, then hide in doors during damage phases or they wipe. But with the Anarchy glitch, none of that matters. Just have four players next to this plate while one stands on the plate and brings Kali over. Then have one person stick three anarchies to her before she leaves the center. When she teleports to where the team is, just shoot two anarchies on her and one on the ground. If you stun her by damaging her enough, she will permanently be stuck in place and give you one large DPS phase, completely skipping all of the mechanics. Number 89, a small cheese with Kali not a lot of people know about, and one that I don't believe still works, is standing above the plate on the symbols and still cleansing them. Normally, this would kill you if you're not on the correct third, but doing this allows you to still cleanse it. Small, but still cheese. Number 90, solo Kali with infinite lives and stasis in the form of Salvation's Grip. Definitely patched, but a weird bug at that. All you had to do for this one was put in the Shuro Chi Wish, then run back to Kali's raid boss room from Shuro. Just use the Salvation's Grip on a Warlock or Titan and breach through the wall by shooting Salvation's Grip at just the right angle. This in tandem with a super, push the player through the wall and into the Kali encounter before you even completed it. This made the encounter a no wipe encounter, so you could respawn infinitely and it allowed you to even solo it. Number 91, Kali Cheese with infinite lives again, this time with an oob to do it. Number 92, Kali infinite lives again, but this time with a joining ally spot. Number 93, Kali took a twisted stasis to the face. By Warlocks casting the stasis super and right clicking all at the same time on this boss, uh, this happened. Number 94. Remember Jotun glitch? Yep, worked here too. Number 95. Despawn in the enemies is back too. Changing characters when the wipe screen pops up is still hurting raids to this day. Number 96. For number 96, we have a new challenger to the arena. Yeah, baby. We're gods of cheese now. All you needed was Quick Fang or Gold Tusk and the card shuffle emote. Okay, stay with me and write that down. Write that down. On Hunter, just heavy attack the air until your sword stops making sound. Trust me, just do it. Then do the card shuffle emote and wait until the light disappears on it. Then hit your ghost button once and quickly dodge. Then sword swing, then emote, then dodge with no lights. This will trap you in first person. Repeating this traps you in a permanent emote state no matter what and allows you to bypass some raid mechanics like the bombs at Cali. See, it all comes back to last wish. Number 97. Shuro Chi time, and only four cheeses for good old Shuro Chi. They all have to do with the bingo room plates. First up for number 97 is two plates at once by world lining slash supering. If a player pulls out world line and uses the dash attack from it in one corner to another, they can get two plates with one dash. Number 98, this time plates, but sliding from one to another to cover two at once. Number 99. Eh, screw all the sliding. How about not taking any damage from wearing a specific emblem? Any emblem that had an aura attached to it allowed the player to not take damage from plates at all. The code for this game, it still amazes me to this day. 
Number 100. We are now 100 cheeses deep. And I'm sure there's some cheeses out there in the wild we never talked about. I'm just saying for our list, we are 100 cheeses deep and only on the second year of Destiny 2. So this list, this list is gonna get massive. Also massive, this giant ball of Chernobyl 5 gum, Morgeth. This cheese was the exact same for Hunters and Titans and required blocking with Sentinel Shield or Arc Middle Tree Hunter. If you were blocking with these, you could pick up infinite orbs. Number 101, Immune Solo Morgeth. All you had to do was freeze Morgeth and hit him with over 154 Lament Heavy Attacks. Wait, did that say 154? What? You had to start the encounter by the end for credit, and it took a long time to do. But hey, loot for Solo Morgeth. I kind of like that cheese. Number 102. Moving while detained. This is very easy. Just pop out a sword or a super or anything that you can move around with when Morgeth detains you and you can kind of zoom while detained. Number 103, Yeet Glitch Volume 1. Get your order of Yeet Glitch Volume 1 by executing a finisher in Destiny 2 Shadowkeep that came with a weird storage glitch. By meleeing and hitting the finisher button near an enemy that was finishable, you now had a stored finisher. Just kick that ball of gum across the map. Number 104. Shiver Shake Glitch. Gonna pretend like I know how this one works, but it's patched, so I don't fully need to explain, now do I? Doing this thing, walk into Morgeth and profit. Number 105. Chad Morgeth Push. Don't understand this one at all, but Warlocks used to be able to float into Morgeth and kill him by the big old chest to the, to the face. Number 106. Shadebinder's back. Spam right click and easy boss is made even easier. Number 107, Wither Horde. Number 108, Joseph Toon. Number 109, another Yeet Glitch, this time with a specific one. Gladiator's Blade Rush finisher not only puts you into a wall if you spam crouch, but for Morgeth, it pushed him off the map. Again. Number 110, 111, 112, 113, and 114 are all various wall breaches to get the glittering key chest, whether it's despawning enemies or breaking through walls. I'm losing count and I'm starting to lose my mind. Number 115, just take the Eye of Riven and put it over there. Number 116, Tractor Cannon, baby! Tractor Cannon boops the Eye of Riven out of the room for an easy kill. Bungie would try to make this harder to do in the future, but it's still possible to this day. Number 117. Riven is up now, and we're gonna go through all of the Riven cheeses. My opinion is that these were fine for a little bit, but now have absolutely ruined the best raid encounter Bungie has ever made. But we're not here for angry YouTube man to make opinions. We're here for cheese. So let's go back to the very first one on Riven. Cluster Bombs. Just bypass all the mechanics by shooting these bad boys at Riven's mouth. Auto loading helped this a lot and this boss just fell over. It still can work, I guess? Number 118. Skipping the Riven challenge by cheesing with weapons. Since nobody shot an eye, everyone got credit for not shooting the same eye twice. Number 119, Stasis versus Riven, insta-kill. Number 120, Wither Horde's back. Number 121, you have been haunted by the ghost of Jotun. Share this video with 10 of your friends or suffer. Number 122, 123, 124, 125, and 126 all use various methods of one-two punch and exotic armor buffs with weapon debuffs. I'm just throwing them all in here and quickly scrubbing through them since it would hurt my brain to explain out in detail how every one of these damage methods were achieved. Number 127, Sword Riven's Claws. Yep, just polish these bad boys with either the Lament and Well, or with other swords. Just go crazy on them. Number 128. Grenade Launcher Riven Cheese. 
This one hasn't really worked since the auto loading days were taken away, but I'm sure it'll come back one day. Number 129. Did I say it would come back one day? Well, we're back to that day. Deafening Whisper on Riven. Any of these floor type of nades will work, but this is a fancy one that still works to this day. Just rebound these off the wall and they do bug damage to get stuck on Riven. Number 130. 6,000 voices versus Riven. This one is patched, but with that awful 1K sound bug came a frame rate bug. Having higher frames with a thousand voices made Riven a one phase. Remember when I said one two punch and damage glitches were all in one? Yeah, I lied. There's three more to go over all related to Worm God Caress. So number 131, 132, and 133 are all just that. Number 134, joining allies and knowing which side Riven will be on. Riven goes to one of two sides, tree side or crystal side but there are ways to know which side she will be on. By running to the wall on the crystal side, there's a joining ally spot. When the timer runs out, it teleports the player to the top of the encounter. Turning up your sound and listening to where Riven made noise was the alert to go to the other side immediately. You can even hear what Riven is saying if you listen really closely. Use code Evan at gamersubs.gg for 20% off this weekend and Every single thing that you buy until the end of the month will go straight to St. Jude's on my behalf. Damn, Riven, you really sound shameless. Number 135. Queen's Walk is the final encounter of Last Wish and the final piece of cheese in this raid's wheel. First up is the finisher glitch. Just finish an ad when you're dying and you don't get teleported at all. Number 136. Remember the grabbing taken strength bug? Of course you do. That one was only like 36 cheeses ago. Just do the same supers and grab as many orbs as you want. Number 137. Ruinous effigy orb cheese. Just have someone with this gun kill an enemy while somebody is holding the heart and then pick that orb up instead of the other orb and you won't be teleported at all. Number 138. Same thing, this time with a stasis lance. Number 139, Vault Skip on Queen's Walk. This one is mostly used for speedruns, but one player can climb over the vault wall with Top Tree Dawnblade and grab the orb from the other side. Number 140, another change characters bug, this time with Infinite Creeping Darkness. Just change characters on the wipe screen and join back for infinite creeping darkness and a pretty easy slam. Number 141. This one is an oob to solo queen's walk and requires a lot of steps to pull off, killing yourself many times, spawning at certain checkpoints, etc. But after it's all said and done, picking up the heart of ribbon and letting the timer run out will complete the encounter. Number 142. Salvation's grip wall breaching into Queen's Walk. This time, no heart was even needed. Sure, it was patched, but this is just hilarious. Number 143, Flawless Last Wish Cheese. No encounters, no enemies killed, just a hard triumph for free. But it's really hard to set this one up, including a lot of death, Salvation's grip, checkpoint manipulation, joining and leaving, privacy settings, so I'm going to leave a link to Cheese's video on this one, but my opinion is that this cheese was honestly not worth your time. Hell, it's definitely patched, but it's a wild ride for sure. And with all of those out of the way, that is Last Wish Raid Cheese's Counted. This raid was broken and clocks in with 57 cheeses. By far our most cheesed raid on the list so far. Before I go to the next raid, and for the five of you still watching, I just want to say thank you for being here. That's all. We'll make it to the end one day, I'm sure. Oh, Scourge of the Past. A raid that I said created absolute anarchy. And I meant that, and still really do. Scourge of the Past was the very first raid a part of Destiny's seasonal model. And it was a really good start at that, with weapons like Anarchy and Threat Level, and encounters like Sparrow Racing. But most of all, 
big servitor. Scourge also created Absolute Anarchy because of the Day 1 race, where DDoS attacks left a lot of teams out of the raid race picture. Not to mention leveling mishaps, bounties, etc. A good counter to DDoS attacks is not our sponsor today, but instead, cheese. So, let's move on with it then. Number 144. Suicide. Berserker Orb Duping. This one worked till the sun was set. Just throw any grenade that could hurt you at your feet and time a death while dunking the ball. This tricked the game into thinking that the ball was still alive and you could get multiple dunks, speeding up the encounter tenfold. Number 145. Just throw healing nades at the tank and it heals it all the way, making the triumphs of killing every berserker with a tank infinitely easier. Number 146. Sparrow race time, except we're not racing. We're sitting here in this corner while this flaming anus floats past us. This one worked for a while, but just sitting in this spot allowed you to practically walk through this encounter. Number 147. We have more Triumph Cheese, this time for a flawless Sparrow encounter. This one just required one person to get to the chest. Then everyone get there later after the load zone moved their orbs. Running to the chest at the same time procked the Triumph, even though everybody was already dead before. I don't know how this one worked, but I'm assuming it had something to do with load zones. Number 148, Scourge of the Past Sparrow Skip. This one was very tricky. Just jump off of this wall at the right timing and angle your sparrow to get all the way up top, skipping the entire platforming part. Number 149, this one was a networking cheese. One player hopping in and out of the tank refreshes the tank's missiles faster than intended. Now spamming this does pretty decent damage, but by having a player who lives really far away from the other player who was shooting the armor in the middle, for some reason, the last shot from the player that was really far away just instantly killed it. Number 150, the symbol cheese. Normally a player who goes under would have to punch symbols at two different spots, but with this cheese, you can just skip that part and just keep punching. Number 151. This one was very easy. Just dunk your bomb and then get rid of the lockout timer by running to one of these joining ally spots. Number 152. Oh, also, there's a suicide orb dunk that worked here too. Number 153. Guys, uh, Wither Horde Cheese is back. Can you guess what tricks it can do? Number 154. Ohm. Number 155. See you later, Insurrection Prime, you piece of shit! Number 156. This one was combo damage from that weird throwing hammer setup. It was a pain to do, but it worked on this boss too. Number 157. Our final cheese for Scourge of the Past was the ball break without a single tank strat. All you needed was to have the team break the boss's shield points, then have somebody with a bomb run into the boss when the timer ran out. If timed correctly, the bomb would explode and instantly start DPS on the boss, making this encounter about a 20 second encounter. Those are the cheeses of Scourge of the Past. And what an easier ride it was to cover versus Last Wish. You know, a lot of people consider Scourge the most busted of all the raids in Destiny 2 for a while, but Last Wish had 57 cheeses we counted, and Scourge only had 14 in comparison. A much shorter raid, but much less cheese too. I will say for Scourge of the Past, it was sunset, and some of the cheeses that Last Wish has are post-sunsetting, so Last Wish has more encounters and a longer time for that cheese to really age. There was one other raid, though, for the Year 2 experience of Destiny 2, and yeah, it was sunset, but it was also a raid that should have sunset its first encounter. But after that encounter, would the raid make up for it wholeheartedly? Let's find out. crown of sorrow this thing has found its way back into destiny in the newest secret mission but in these days this big helmet and raid 
faded the entire Destiny community. A team that had thought they won was fooled just like the boss of this raid was getting born to wear a crown that turned him green. What a wild ride this raid truly was. Being one of my favorite ones outside of the first encounter, and I definitely still miss this one to this day. But that's what the raid video is for. This is about cheese, and there's a good amount of it here. So let's begin. Number 158. The Colony. A gun that has little bugs hurt things. But did you know it passes immune enemies too? This thing worked till the end and was a cheese to bypass immune knights. No buff needed, just shoot a colony onto you and the knight at the same time. Number 159. Anarchy. Wait. Weren't you from the last raid? Whatever. You're here now and you're breaking crystals by yourself. Yes, with Anarchy, just break the crystals for free by sticking a friend who is either buffed or not buffed. Number 160. Oh, Mountaintop. You just had so many uses back in the day. One of them was breaking crystals without ever going into the bubbles. Just shoot Mountaintop at the top of the bubble and it counted as a kill of the crystals. This one was weird. Number 161, 162, and 163 are all different skips of the jumping puzzle, and since they have different routes and means of doing them, I figured they'd all be separate numbers on the list. It's always crazy to me what dedicated players are willing to do to skip a pretty easy encounter. Mostly used for speedrunning, but still very cool to watch. Number 164. More Anarchy Bubble Breaks, this time uh, for further in, further into the raid. Number 165. Hey look, a cheese that overlapped with my Telesto video again. This time, the Galron's Deception Encounter, where Telesto got busy on weakening the Deception early. All you had to do was put Telesto on the Deception's bubble and kill yourself. This will slowly whittle down the boss's health for an easy one phase. Number 166. Chaos Reach through the barrier at Galron's Deception. Using a weird angle and Chaos Reaching through the wall, you can take out all of the enemies on a side, completely bypassing anyone needing to be on that side at all. This was mostly used in low man challenges like Two Man Crown of Sorrow, but it could be used in a six player environment too. Number 167. Anarchy Bubble Pops also work well for the Deception, and they kept breaking the Deception Bubble without anyone losing their buff. The reason why I haven't included meleeing or any other means to do this is because it was basically the same. Stick him, run away, and keep the buff the whole time. The buff was fully proximity based, so it just kind of made sense. Number 168. Who brought you out into the party? Hey, hey, get out! Number 169. Mountain Topping the Crystals also returns in the final encounter of the raid, Galron. Number 170. Soloing the Crystals with Anarchy also returns here too. Number 171. Deception Cheese with Melees. This one is borderline a strategy, but it does bypass the intended mechanics, so we're gonna call it a cheese. Galron's Deception can be meleeed, then if somebody runs away from it before the other punch comes in, the person with the buff can keep the buff. Number 172. I see Jotun invited you to the party, Witherhorde. Get out of here! And with that, those are all of the cheeses in Crown of Sorrow that we counted on this list. Not a super long list, but longer in comparison to Scourge of the Past clocking in at 15 cheeses to Scourge's 14. And Last Wish is still behemoth of 57 cheeses. That would be it for year two, but year three came in swinging harder than ever, having one raid. Welcome to Garden of Salvation. A raid that I said shocked the community with how underwhelming it was. Coming off of Last Wish, Scourge of the Past, and Crown of Sorrow. It's not even really the raid's fault though. It's the fact that we had pinnacle weapons for everything and Garden had almost no loot worth getting for the year. On top of that, this raid was the only one for the year, making players less antsy to care about it. 
Not to mention the fact that it is Gambit the raid, and I do not like Gambit. Nowadays, my opinion on this raid has shifted a bit. I like the bow, the fusion, and the pulse rifle. I'm still not excusing the final encounter. I actually think that is the worst final encounter in a raid. But the raid has improved? Has the cheese also improved? Let's talk about it. Number 173. You remember that Taken Strength cheese, right? Well, it worked on the Harpy Poop too. By using Sentinel Titan or Whirlwind Hunter, you could grab multiple poops just by walking with these out. Number 174. Remember the solo Kali with infinite lives? Well, it also worked for Garden of Salvation too. Number 175. Remember mechanic-based god mode? That one was weird, but it also worked here too. Number 176. Being tethered and killing enemies. Yes, this one still can work. Just block, finish, ruinous effigy orb, etc. enemies to just bypass the mechanic. Number 177. There's a mechanic in Garden of Salvation where enemies have immune shields, but Colony doesn't play by those rules. So just walk into any shield and shoot Colony on them to pop these shields right off for an easy kill. Number 178. Symmetry is back in the news, everyone. This time, taking off shields. You thought it was gone forever, but nope, it's here. Number 179. Consecrated Mind, off the map. Just throw a smoke bomb, and there was a chance this dude would slip on a banana peel and fall off the map. Number 180. The Enhanced Relay Glitch. Just throw on the gear with the mod for increased damage next to a relay, then swap to any other armor while standing next to it to keep the buff. This one gave 33% extra damage to everything. Number 181. Wanna bully this harpy even more? Just stop him from going down the hallway. Just by thunder crashing over it, the boss basically noodles out the other side. Number 182 and 183. Guess what? Colony and Symmetry, they're back at it again. Number 184. Divinity Puzzle Cheese this time. Using this now patched method, a player could just move back and forth on the Divinity Puzzle plates to auto-complete them, skipping the only really fun puzzle. Number 185 and 186. The usual suspects, Wither Horde, the Throwing Hammer Glitch. Yes, we know both of you insta-kill the boss, and we're very bored of you. Number 187, spawning more moats on the right side. You just had to have everyone sit up top, then jump off at the same time when another wave of enemies spawned in place. Now just mow them down and profit on your moats, skipping all the boring parts of this encounter. Number 188. That last one does not work anymore, but this one does. Just jump over here instead and profit. Number 189. We have another spot that I am scared to say still works after last time, but this one on the blue side portal instead. Just float all the way up and let the enemies respawn. Really easy and both sides can now skip all the mechanics for an easy challenge and an easy kill on the boss. Number 190. I'm just gonna let Cheese explain this one, but yes, another boss with an infinite damage phase. We love to see it. The reason this glitch happens is because you tether the boss, but also break the tether. That means this is actually easiest with a two-man tether. You want the person closest to the tether box to stretch out as far as possible. Then you want to tether the boss, but break the tether as it's happening. It takes about two seconds for a tether to register, so you don't want to be fully connected to the boss for long. That is why I recommend moving forward towards the boss to break the tether chain. This will still technically tether the boss for a short time after moving out of your partner's range. Then kind of move in and out of that range. This should move you between first and third person. If done successfully, it'll start infinite damage phase. Number 191 and 192. God damn it, you two. Symmetry and colony shields break here too. Number 193. Yeet sandwich. This finisher glitch is back, but this time just keep sanctified mind in between you and somebody else and finish away and watch him fly. Number 194. The enhanced relay glitch is back. 
this time with Big Minotaur. All right, everyone, those are the Garden of Salvation cheeses, and I thought there would be a lot more. And who knows, maybe out in the wild, there are a lot more. But for our video, and for the current time of Black Friday in 2021, there are 22 cheeses, a good platter for year three. Now, onto the era of sunsetting, a year where a lot of cheeses are gonna be left behind since the raids are no longer in the game. It's still bittersweet to this day, and I think even Bungie's hindsight has to be that sunsetting raids was a bad idea. Look no further for evidence than the Tangled Shore being sunset, but the Dreaming City with all activities including raids and dungeons not being sunset. You will be seeing a new era of cheese though, and a nice frozen place. The first time space and the winter tundra was chosen for a raid. So let's sunset year 3 and hit the reset button to year 4. Welcome to Deepstone Crypt, a raid that I said blew away the Destiny community, and a place where we quite literally shot into space. This raid is such a giant step for Destiny in terms of storytelling and setting, feeling like the game evolved to the Destiny 1 raid days of a unique setting away from the campaign. Original Leviathan being the only one, in my opinion in Destiny 2, to do so. I still love this raid, even though it's way too easy nowadays, and is in desperate need of a master version. But nothing screams mastering a raid like cheesing a raid, so let's pass the 200 mark and talk about the cheeses. Number 195. Getting the raid goes from all the scannables solo and without doing a single encounter. I said a lot of cheeses were sunset, but not Salvation's Grip. Beyond Light is where this cheese started, and by wall breaching and oobing with this weapon, Blade Barrage supering or another super, a player could get all the scannables in the raid early. Number 196. Remove Frostbite from the first encounter. Just hop on a sparrow that is outside of a safety bubble from inside and poof, Frostbite is gone. Number 197. Frostbite removal post patch. This time with a door instead of a bubble. Time the airlock to close as you're hopping on a sparrow and never worry about frostbite again. Number 198. Another frostbite removal, this time post post patch. This one had a cave and an oob. And the same method really was used otherwise. This one still got patched though. I guess not even post post was safe from the cold. Number 199. Just walk through the walls of the crypt security in Deepstone Crypt and do the mechanics from the top to the bottom. This is how the two man of the raid was done. Number 200. Holy crap. We made it to 200 and you're still here. I think we're both insane at this point. Also insane, this fucking cheese. Yes, I am cursing on this one because <laughs> explaining this one, oh boy. So I'm gonna fast forward this footage and try to explain. There is a vandal way outside of the map that is the health bar for the crypt security encounter. Whoa, 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 I get it. Doesn't make sense to me either. And you'll find that with this raid a lot. This vandal is the health bar for the encounter. In this box, way outside of the map. So just have someone follow this route and ax him out. No clue if this one still works, but good luck finding people that can get here. Number 201. You know what? Just play the clip. Number 202. Okay, so pretend we already did the cheese to get under the map, and we're just shooting fuses here for a low man. But now, there's a Chaos Reach to pop through the map and kill them. Number 203. Do you want to solo this encounter? 
Yeah, you do. I don't know why you would. It's way easier with six. Anyway, just finish an enemy in this exact spot from under the map and joining allies will pop up, moving you to the top to do both damage and shooting panels. Number 204. Did you ever want to turn off that pesky fire and crypt security? You got a sparrow handy? Just shoot the wrong panels and jump back on your sparrow. That'll shut that one off. Number 205. Remember when I said this whole raid has some weird stuff to it? Atrax isn't Atrax either. Atrax is a captain outside of the encounter. And originally, you could just chaos reach through a wall to kill this captain pretty easily. Number 206. Another Atrax Oog. This time, a much easier method. Just Salvation's grip and walk over here. There's a captain right there. Number 207. Another oob with this same method, this time after the first patch. Number 208. Another cheese that wasn't sunset? One two punch, throwing hammers. Don't worry, this one doesn't involve Telesto, just a whole lot of damage. Number 209. Want to solo Atrax? It's hard. What's not too hard is grabbing Operator and cleansing yourself with ricochet rounds off the walls. This one definitely still works and is really fun to master. Number 210. This one I believe still works, but is never needed since you can easily just shoot the replications off of someone. But the cheese is to beat Atrax challenge while still cleansing the debuffs. You could just not cleanse and over damage. You can also just die in the airlock to time. It cleanses it and it cheeses it. Unnecessary, but easy. We are going to add another yogurt here. We are going to put anything that involves Star Eater Scales and Curus of the Fallen Star chess piece right here. Both of these exotics could absolutely floor bosses, but I struggle to say that they're cheeses. If anything, Curus would fall into that for Atrax, but they're just a lot of damage from an overtuned exotic. Number 211. Joining allies to get rid of deactivated augment at the Rapture encounter. Just find one of many at the time joining ally spots and lose the deactivation, making a two man possible, but not really necessary for six players. Number 212. Despawning nukes at descent has had some progress over time. So the next three cheeses go over those. First one up is this oob with an orb with joining allies timing. Number 213, and the next one up is a finisher glitch for joining allies. Number 214 is a change characters and oob. Why not? I have no more words for this one. This video is pretty stretched though, and I think this one still works to this day. Number 215. We're crashing from the descent and fighting Tanix, who, if you think about it, has been cheesing everyone. Coming back to life four different times in Destiny. The first Tanix cheese up requires us to block his path with the Behemoth Titan Ultimate. Yes, a floating boss gets stopped by rocks. This isn't the cheese though, that just slows him down. The cheese is breaking out of the Detain bubble by timing a dash with Titan. This is only a necessary cheese for the two man, but it's still really cool. Titan's melee did get patched in the future. Number 216. This method can also be done with world line. Number 217. By timing the pickup, this nuke timer could be reset. Number 218. Man, this one is patched, but was slow. Just throw Nova Bombs at Immune Tanix and keep waiting until he eventually dies. It took like two hours and was not worth it, but you could kill Tanix before the encounter even started. Number 219. The final cheese with Tanix involves surviving the meteor shower. All you had to do was emote and profit. With that being said, Deepstone Crypt is done. A nice solid 25 cheeses to go with it. I can't help but still enjoy Deepstone Crypt, despite its lackluster difficulty. This raid just doesn't have a single bad encounter. The loot is still stellar, the location is grand, but if they added a master mode for it, it might become my favorite raid Bungie has ever made. Surpassing even Last Wish and Wrath of the Machine. 
In year four of Destiny 2, we got our first taste of remastered raids. And for the first time since Last Wish, we got multiple raids in one year. A remastered classic. So let's see how Bungie did on their first ever remaster. Welcome to the Vault of Glass, again. If you made it this far into the video, you might be surprised that Vogg is back again, this time with a facelift of cheese. So long are the days of vanilla Vault of Glass. Now, we have 60 FPS cutscenes. How would Bungie do on their first remastered raid? So much cheese or not enough? Number 220, every single chest solo. We're not off to a great start, Bungie. By following a lot of steps, including luring minotaurs, wall breaching, moving around out of bounds, etc., you could grab all of the bonus chests in the Vault of Glass. This one is patched now, but what an odd oob. We have another bonus cheese, but this time I won't count it as a cheese. Definitely more of a yogurt. This is for the Oracle's encounter. Just have perfect pitch or memorize the oracle sounds and you never visually have to do them again. Note that this one also works on Atheon too. Number 221, the Aegis glitch. Just by making a bunch of orbs at the Templar and standing in a bubble, then jumping out and popping the relic super on the Templar's shield, the Aegis would basically insta-kill this boss. This boss already has barely any health. So this is just a rude cheese. Number 222. Did we celebrate 222? Did we celebrate 111? Sorry about that 222, you're not getting celebrated. 222's cheese was an infinite cleanse spot in the Templar's well. Normally a team has three total cleanses from the negation, the boss, or the fanatics inflict. But this spot gave infinite, making the encounter so much less lethal Number 223. By timing the detainment from the Templar correctly, the Relic Holder could break themselves out of the detainment. This required pretty precise timing and was really only useful for Solo Templar, but hey, we're bypassing mechanics. Number 224. You ever just want to never worry about the Gorgons again? Well, listen up! Have that one friend that knows what they're doing make it past the Gorgons while everyone else kills themselves. Once they hit another load zone, just respawn and walk through, even if this rock doesn't want you to party. Number 225. Why worry about sneaking past the Gorgons when you can just nuke them with Wardcliff Coil? Get the triumph easy by just shooting the Gorgons with this exotic. The reason this exotic works so well is that it does well against whatever the game has registered as a vehicle. So Valkaor got nuked by this rocket too. This one still works. We have another yogurt here, because even though it's odd, you're still doing the Gorgons normally. The Chad strategy of just walking past the Gorgons or emoting near them, whatever worked, for some reason, these Gorgons were not coded all that well. Number 226, Gatekeepers, a newly remastered encounter that took the old 30 second encounter and made it an actual encounter again. Gatekeepers did come with a lot of cheese though, since it's new and didn't have a lot of time to patch all the holes in the Swiss. Now, Symmetry never got its shield breaking possibilities on immune enemies here, but Prometheus Lens did. Just shoot it at the Minotaurs and watch them crumble. Number 227. Colony also came back to break the shields too. You just had to see it coming, right? Number 228. Vault of Glass Remaster may not have had a push Atheon off the map cheese yet, but it does have an emote and the Minotaurs at Gatekeeper can also be pushed off. Just use stasis or blinding grenades and push them off the ledge. Number 229. How about we also just drop the relic off the map too? In sort of a fail safe, if the relic falls off the map and onto one of two sides, the relic will just respawn in the middle. This only works one time and is really only useful for the two-man challenge, but it's still pretty funky. Number 230. Now you can't push Atheon off of the map, but how about just killing him in Venus while he's basically T-posing? This bug needed the player to respawn in Venus' side after the gatekeeper's encounter was done. 
the portal is normally closed, but by respawning in here by sheer chance, the player could just kill the robot. You could even see his health bar with Darcy, making this the only time in three years this gun has been relevant. Number 231. Finisher Glitching. This one returns here and a lot of players have accidentally done this glitch. I know I did on my day one attempt. Just finish an enemy while Atheon tries to teleport you to either Venus or Mars in the main room. And if timed correctly, you'd return to the main room. Number 232. How about a Relic Infinite Damage Phase glitch? Just keep the Relic until the timer on it hits zero, then immediately drop it and pick it up for Infinite Damage Phase, completely bypassing the timer and adding another boss to an Infinite Damage Phase in Destiny. Number 233. Want to instantly kill Atheon instead? Remember one of many Worm God caresses and throwing hammer glitches? Just throw your throwing hammers in a spot on his leg to have the hammer keep bouncing and dealing damage. Number 234. War Mine Cells. You know those little orange balls. Blow them up and they will take out all of the oracles for you. No callouts needed. Well, with Remastered Vogue, we are officially done. Having 15 cheeses. 10 less than our brand new raid in Deepstone Crypt, and that's to be expected seeing as Bungie patched a lot from Vanilla Vogue. With that being said, those are all of the cheeses in Remastered Vogue, and those are all of the cheeses we found in the history of Destiny, from Vanilla Destiny all the way to Remastered Vogue. Oh, oh, hold on, wait. Ah, oh, shit, we have to keep going a little longer? Oh no, we have to keep going? <laughs> please, I just, please. Well everyone, this next section, we are going to fittingly speedrun since these are all the oobs that players were able to find before the raids even came out. These oobs didn't cheese encounters, they cheese content. So let's wrap up this massive video. Welcome to the final section of the video. We are going to go over the oobs to get into the raids. Oobs to get rewards. Oobs, oobs, oobs. Out of bouncing or oobing is very popular in video games, among the speedrun community especially. For the sake of this video, I just really wanted to get to 250 cheeses, and we are going to do that no matter what. Welcome to number 235. Oobing into Vog in Destiny 1 before it even came out. Just use a sparrow and follow this path. You can even grab a free chest. Number 236. In Wrath of the Machine, you could oob to get all five chests too. First one up on our super sped footage is Titans. Number 237. Second one up in our oob path for all chests are Warlocks. Number 238. Yep, Hunters. Number 239. Last wish cheesing into the oob before the raid even came out. Getting a chest early. And before you say, Evan, you already said this one. It was so cool I'm counting it twice. Number 240. Garden of Salvation also had an oob to get all the chests solo. Just follow the sped up footage and profit. Number 241. Later on, without using sticky nades to climb the wall oob, players were able to find a way to get all the chests still without them. It took some time to do, but Destiny Prophet is Destiny Prophet. Number 242. Getting into all of Deepstone Crypt early, players were able to oob into the whole thing, something I'm still sad about to this day. Number 243. Not only could players get into Deepstone Crypt early, they could also get loot early. I say loot, but I really just mean raid mods. Just follow this path and it took a player all the way to space and to the jumping puzzle chest. Number 244. How about another way to get the space chest? Salvation's grip oobing? Yep, just space ice it. Number 245. Another way to do the Salvation's grip cheese, just more ice and titans. 
Number 246. Who needs a titan? Just do a different Salvation's Grip Cheese on a Hunter. Easy peasy. Number 247. Okay, Bungie, stop patching my damn oobs and let me cheese some chests. Another Salvation's Grip Cheese. Post patch 3.0.2. Number 248. Okay, maybe they can't patch the Hunter version of it. Oh, come on! Number 249. I'm just throwing two pieces of cheese here at the end to get to 250. This one, you can't patch it. Thank you all for watching this massive video. This script was over 71 pages long, and the fact that you watched all this just honestly means so much to me. There won't be bloopers for this video since this whole video was bloopers, but I think I'm gonna take a little break after this one. Enjoy the holidays, hang out with the family, this one took all the energy out of me, and I hope you understand. So, I'll see you when 30th anniversary comes out. There was 13 raids with 67 encounters to cover, and I'm sure there's some cheeses that we missed. There's always going to be. Going from Vault to Glass all the way to Vault to Glass is sort of an ironic path. There is a lot of cheese out there in Destiny. It is one of the reasons why I love this game and one of the reasons why I hate this game. It is a very ironic and very disappointing sentence to say, but that's just destiny. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, come follow me on all my socials with my Twitch, my second channel where I'm posting clips. I have nothing else to promote. I guess my bed. Shout out to my bed. Good night. Mm.